How to Be an Inspiring Jewish Parent, Rule 5. Rule 5, I came across when I was sitting one day with the then Chief Rabbi of Israel, Rabbi Avram Shapira. And he told me a fascinating story about two Gedole Adar, two great Torah sages of the 19th century, one of whose children stayed firm and within the faith and became great rabbis themselves, the other of whom, uh, sadly, his children uh, became uh, disillusioned and left the fold. And he said to me, the difference had to do with Suda Shlishit. They, but the two Gedolim conducted Suda Shlishit completely differently. One of them gave a brilliant and very complex Dvar Torah. The other one sang Zmiris and Nikunim. He said, guess which one's children stayed within the faith? It's not a tough one. The one that sang the music kept their children with it. He kept his children within the faith. Never think that religion, that Judaism, is just cognitive. It's affective. It's not just a matter of the mind. It's a matter of the emotions. And music is the language of the emotions. And whatever happened to the music, for heaven's sake, when the Israelites crossed through the Red Sea, Az Yashem Yisrael, they sang a song. They didn't give speeches. They didn't sit and learn a Masechet. They sang a song. David HaMalach was the great singer of Israel and wrote the most immortal songs. Yes, he wrote the original Hallelujah that Dan Leonard Cohen wrote about, the secret chord that pleased the Lord. Shlomo HaMalach wrote Shia Hashir in the Song of Songs. For heaven's sake, let Judaism sing. Think of this moment, almost the last moment of Moses' life. Here he is, 119, 11 months and many days. He's within sight of the end of his life. And he has given 612 commands to Israel. You and I were probably at the age of 119, and we've given 612 commands. Call it a day. That's a pretty good career average. But Moshe Rabbeinu said, no, there's one more command I have to give the Israelites. What was that command? The last of the 630. The mitzvah that each of us must write a Sefer Torah or take part in the writing of the Sefer Torah. Afal peace says the Rambam Shein Yichol Avotav Sefer Torah. Even though your parents have left, or your family has a, a, an heirloom, a, you've inherited one from your parents, it's not enough. You have to write one for yourself or take part in the writing of one. Just even one letter is enough for yourself. What was Moshe Rabbeinu thinking? I'll tell you what I think he was thinking. He was thinking, I'm about to leave this generation behind. And I want them to know one thing. Kindelach. Don't think it's enough that your parents or you receive the Torah from Moshe Rabbeinu. You have to take the Torah and make it new in every generation. And what did he call the Torah at that moment? He did not say, Vatakit Vulachem et Atorahazot. He said, Vatakit Vulachem et Hashirahazot. Write this song, not write this book. What he meant was, if you want to hand on the Torah to your children so they will write a Sefer Torah and make it new for their generation, teach it as a song, not just a speech. Speech and language is the language of the mind, song is the language of the soul. And if we want to let Judaism live on in our children and across the generations, we have not just to say the words, we have to sing the song. We have not just to think the thoughts, we have to let Judaism sing. So make sure that yours is a home full of music, full of warmth, full of emotion. And that is rule five. Sing your Judaism and it will sing for your children. Thank you.